The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And as we have today, we're off 45, almost 46 points on the S&P cash. Uh, the Dow is down 412, NASDAQ's down 154, Russell's down 31. Uh, all on the backdrop of volume that's going to probably come in somewhere around uh, six-tenths, maybe, of what we had last time we were down at these levels. So certainly we're getting what I was hoping uh, over the last four or five days there were maybe a week that we talked about, and that is a pullback on light volume. Um, the amplitude was a lot bigger than I thought it would be, uh, but we don't see a lot of heavy selling. We're going to talk about that and much more. We're going to look at some charts and start seeing uh, well, what they're throwing out with the uh, bathwater. Is it a baby or is it something else? Uh, anyway, uh, we'll talk about that. Of course, uh, uh, we're going to go to the uh, traffic report up to the Hamptons. Uh, I saw that uh, going into Long Island, uh, it was as crowded as it ever would be. They've got 20 helicopters running full blast to drag people up there. Uh, so uh, it certainly is the big weekend for the Wall Street set uh, to go up to the Hamptons. Uh, as I said earlier in the den, it looked like a plague of locusts flying people in there when I was looking at the news. Uh, a lot of people around there starting to complain about the helicopters, probably complaining about the traffic too. But um, yeah, I can't imagine you could get that many people up there in helicopters. What do they hold? Four or five people? Hmm. Uh, anyway, you kind of, you kind of felt or at least I kind of felt the air go out of the room about 1 o'clock. That's when everybody started leaving early, I suspect, from Wall Street. Uh, tomorrow, probably close to a ghost town, but I assume that almost all of the action is in for today. Uh, we could still have a little bit. You never know when the tweet is going to come. It's going to move things, but certainly not down on any kind of volume uh, Why we are down on a uh, absolute uh, level fairly strongly, but uh, a lot of these stocks not showing, you know, the end of the world are certainly not down to where they were before and certainly down on lighter volume. So we'll see what happens on that. We've got the elections uh, for the UK going on. We won't know the results of that till Sunday night. That may be a little bit of a damper on the market today also. Uh, as we uh, look at it, even though we know, of course, the market's going to be closed here on Monday, they may be a little bit more active uh, in uh, Europe uh, on that. Uh, but I think uh, the polls have been fairly clear so far. And the uh, party that, uh, at least in the UK, it looks like it's going to win the bulk of the seats, hasn't been around but for five weeks, uh, kind of a protest party because uh, the other folks didn't get it done. Uh, and uh, what else can you say? That's about it. Kind of a quiet day out here. We're going to, now it's quiet. Wasn't quiet earlier in the day. A lot of action and fireworks. Uh, but we'll continue to soldier on. Um, you can send me email at path at tfnn.com. And the question is, uh, the first one already is, uh, have I been out buying? And the answer is yes. And I look at buying more stuff tomorrow. And, uh, the risk reward just about as good as it gets as long as the volume remains light. Now, could we get a deep uh, dip a little bit more uh, tomorrow, a little more? Yeah, it just makes the risk reward even that better if the volume is as light today. My guess is it'll be half of what it is today. Uh, as always, we like to do a little bit of history to start the show off. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. 
Mm. On this day in 1960, a tsunami caused by an earthquake off the coast of Chile travels across the Pacific Ocean, kills 20 or 61 people in Hilo, Hawaii on this day. Uh, the massive 9.5 magnitude quake had killed thousands in Chile the previous day. Uh, the earthquake involving a severe plate shift caused a large displacement of water off the coast of Chile at 3.11 p.m., traveling at speeds in excess of 400 miles an hour. The tsunami moved west and north, and on the uh, west coast of the United States, the waves caused an uh, a estimated $1 million uh, in damage, were, were not deadly. Uh, as we said before, it killed 61 people in Hilo, Hawaii. I would arrive there two weeks later, just a babe in swaddling clothes. I don't know what swaddling clothes are. I kind of remember that from the bottle, uh, the Bible, though. Uh, anyway, I would show up about two weeks later to a, a semi-destroyed uh, Air Force base. And uh, eh, they talked about it. I remember the pictures. And, uh, of course, they had uh, drills. And even on this one, uh, they had a six-hour, five-hour um, alarm. They started putting in the uh, uh, the tsunami alarms in 1948. So they've been around for a while when we talk about seeing all these tsunamis that wipe places out in Asia. Uh, but uh, they were out in 1948, so we're around for about 12 years before really needed it for Hawaii. But uh, eh. As I was growing up, there were still giant piles of trash left over from that, and that's everybody kind of talked about it. But on this day in 1960, we had uh, people killed in Hawaii, and I think a handful of uh, people in, was it Seattle? Or maybe that was another one, but it's there. Uh, okay, well, I don't know what to tell you. The guy, the engineer says, my slide's not going through. But uh, guess what? I've got it clicked in Hotcom, and I don't know what else to do. We'll try to reset it at the break. Uh, anyway, uh, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can uh, put a message in the den at any time you want. Uh, when we come back, we'll be looking, like I said, at individual charts. I am not uh, going long, uh, the indexes themselves, as we've talked about it in the last week, I suspect we're going to get a sector rotation. That sector rotation is going to be built on which stocks can do better and have little to do with trade as we get into that. Anyway, join me. Uh, again, I will be uh, flying off uh, tonight and uh, back the 3rd of June. So uh, I will be on semi-vacation, a working vacation. Uh, we may talk about that uh, later on some, if someone calls in. And uh, what else do we have? I think that's about it. Should hear a little music right now. Where's it at? I know it's coming. There it is. Anyway, we'll look at some charts when we come back. Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. 
The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're going to go to our first caller of the day. Other callers can queue up and call me at 727-3, no, that's my home phone number. 877-927-6648. Almost gave away the store. How you doing today, John, from Philadelphia? Good afternoon, David. I uh, wanted to uh, ring you and speak to you before you went off on your sojourn for the next uh, 14 days. Uh, specifically, we've watched uh, you with interest over the years uh, develop your, uh, your trading systems with your price and uh, technical work databases, uh, including lots of options work, lots of short selling work to fine tune uh, trading tactics that uh, you've become quite good at. So my question is when you're going off to your uh, software development courses in Seattle upcoming, can you just share with us a story about, uh, in layperson's terms, what it is you're actually going to be, uh, what skills you're going to be building, maybe an example uh, or two thereof, and uh, how that might be used for you anyway in uh, advancing your, um, uh, your, your trading systems and, and hopefully your profit performance. Well, I've got an excellent system for finding lows. Maybe it gets better, maybe it doesn't, but finding lows has, has been very good with my sector oscillators. They're in my newsletter every day. Um, that's kind of a wisdom of the crowds approach. Um, highs uh, forever for anybody that's tried to develop a system uh, has been one of those things because they can hang out for a lot longer. And uh, what I'm going to learn um, next week, I'm go I actually have two different things. One starts tomorrow and one and runs uh, Friday and Saturday, and then uh, another one starts on Tuesday. But the one on Tuesday uh, is about reinforcement learning. And this is a way of using um, machine learning to help you, let's say you are playing a game like uh, Space Invaders. Uh, you can have a, a, a what they call an agent, which is nothing more than like a player, like player one or something. And it just continues to play the game. Maybe it's watching somebody else play the game. Maybe it's watching you. Eventually, you just let it sit there and play the game itself 
and let it give it a few rules and let it go out there and see if it can't find rules that are any better. And you play it over time. Now, in the case of Space Invaders, if you've ever played it, if you can get the ball to go up the side and then bounce off the top and then bounce off the little bricks uh, back and forth, you can whittle out 10 or 15 bricks real quick from it just bouncing up on and top on the bottom or uh, bouncing around up there on the top. Um, and you find out that if you play 100 games of Space Invaders uh, that are, are Pong, let me put it that way, Pong is the one that bounces off the top. If you, but they do Space Invaders too. But the idea is that if you let it play enough games, it'll start figuring out scenarios in where there's high uh, reward for the play. And that's exactly what you do. You, if you let the machine just sit there and play games, uh, by the time it plays the uh, games, uh, uh, 100 games of uh, Pong, it'll be better than any human player. Uh, by the time it plays 500 games, it figures out that every time it can, it wants to get the ball around the side and bounce off the top to bounce as many times as it can off the bricks uh, until it breaks back through down the bottom. So it's figured out a strategy that's much better than most people ever figure out. And there's basically there's reinforcement learning, and then there's another thing which is called cue learning. And both of those are what I'm learning next week. Cue learning is nothing more than using a deep uh, ne neural network uh, to try to come up with better rules and strategies to play that game. So it, I, I, why it's not hard uh, to actually program these, and I've worked on it already, uh, a lot of it is probably thinking about ideas that you haven't thought of yet uh, for rules uh, that you might try to uh, uh, educate the program to to try, so not all the time can they you know will they automatically find all the rules, uh, but it, it so what I'm really doing is looking for new ideas uh, for that, especially at highs where it's hard. Uh, we pretty much caught all the uh, the highs in the last uh, move in the newsletter. But again, I have, a, I have a feeling that had a lot more to do with me and my experience than anything that was in the actual algorithms or in my, uh, my trading system. So trading system works incredibly well off the lows. The problem is that highs can hang out there, and I'm looking for better rules. And maybe this thing finds a better scenario for handling those highs. But... Uh, Technically, there's two things. There's called reinforcement learning, which is nothing more than kind of setting up a game and letting it try a lot of different scenarios and, and uh, ways of doing something to see what is optimum. And uh, the other part is uh, called Q learning, and it's called deep reinforcement learning when you put both of those together. Uh, but uh, those deep reinforcement um, uh, go for uh, things that you may not see. Uh, it will so, try to make a function uh, that actually expresses what's in there, what that so maybe can, a human cannot see. Yeah, thank, and that's, thanks for that explanation. I, I think I follow. I uh, just wanted to ask a follow-up. Um, are the biggest hedge funds on the planet, you know, uh, including ones we've heard of, like Citadel uh, or... Um, <clears throat> um, or maybe even uh, Cohen's. Um, do those funds and the people who uh, you know oversee those? Do they do they have on staff you know computer specialists with trading backgrounds who've already done just what you're you know attempting to learn in um, uh, developing the systems they've got you know to uh, to grow profits? I think they do, but it's much different. If you've got a, a, you know, if you've got half a billion dollars to put to work, you're not going to get in and out of the market fairly easily. So you've got to do something completely different than I can. I can click one button and be out of any kind of stock up to the full level of forex uh, margin that I have, and it probably won't make a blip on any stock that's out there. 
Now, if they want to go sell $500 million worth of uh, Tesla, uh, that'll, that's going to make a little dent in it today. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Right. So, the, so it is, do they have the folks? Yes. Uh, do the, do what they do, can it apply to the little guy? Probably not. And what do I do? Um, I'm kind of like a very fast little reptile uh, that didn't get killed off in the dinosaurs. They're dinosaurs. <laughs> they, have to play, they have to plan Excellent. way far ahead, or they play in the next millisecond in high-frequency trading. So I, I'm just going to say it's, it's very different to what they do. The answer is yes, though. They have all these folks, but their trading styles are very different. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Com now. The TFNN Memorial Day Tiger Dollar Sale is here. From now through Memorial Day, you can get up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars never expire and can be used for any TFNN good or service. Whether you're a current subscriber looking to add instant savings or you're a new listener or viewer that is considering signing up for any product in the near future, now is a great time to get your Tiger Dollars and lock in dramatic savings on all TFNN products and services. We only have a sale like this a couple times a year, so don't let it pass you by. Tiger Dollars are are available in three purchase options with a 20%, 30%, and even 40% bonus. Once you purchase your Tiger Dollars, you'll be able to apply them to your TFNN account, and then they are automatically used for all your recurring subscriptions going forward, making it as easy as possible. For all the details on this Tiger Dollar promotion running through Memorial Day, visit the front page of TFNN.com and get your Tiger Dollars before this sale passes you by. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts has a special running for one week only. From now through Memorial Day, you can save 25% off your first month and we'll ship you a hardcover copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade. The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system. This software package is the fastest, easiest, and most accurate way to analyze stocks using Tom O'Brien's trading philosophy. It automatically provides you with Gartley and Butterfly patterns, swing points, retracement levels, confluence areas, expansion targets, and the Power Law Vector Indicator with just the click of a mouse. The scanner searches thousands of stocks each day and delivers a list of every Gartley and Butterfly pattern it finds automatically. Just enter the promo code BOOK at checkout. This sale ends Memorial Day, May 27th, so don't let it pass you by. For all the details and to save 25% and get your free book shipped today, check out the art of timing the trade charts on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Um, John, still on the line. Yes, sir, David. Thanks so much for that. I, uh, I love the way you... Um share little stories. I uh, certainly don't understand any of the de details that you're expert in in computer programming, but uh, uh, your storytelling uh, leaves me with a comfortable feeling I understand the concept. Um, but with that said, I wanted to ask you just a follow-up. Uh, today, and frankly for the past two weeks, you've described a story in which you've said if the market pulled back with light volume, you were going to be a buyer, and you've acted upon that, uh, expecting some sort of rally coming out of here. Uh, I'd like to ask you if you can explain 
why or why you see that as being uh, a strong probability, especially after the um, the S and P and its derivative futures rallied very you know a very large amount from December into May, and we're still pretty close to those highs. Um, you seem to think we could go to higher highs. If you could kindly elaborate what it is in your thinking that leads you to speculate that will occur, please. Yeah, well, there's a handful of things. Uh, first, I will say that I have to owe this to uh, uh, Tim Ord, uh, who was on uh, TFNN in the early 2000s, and he talked about how you should think about these big three-day weekends. And I picked up on that and, you know, for, well, 15, 16, 17 years, it seems to have worked. And that is if you get to these big three-day weekends and all the volume falls out, then the market tends to turn the other way. If you come in to the weekend with a lot of volume, um, then generally the character of the market will change. So you want kind of just the opposite. When everybody's going away for three days and they figured out what's going on, if they're all complacent and the market goes higher, then generally everybody comes back and the market starts to sell off. And if everybody's fearful going into these long day, uh, long weekends, then just the opposite. Everybody kind of feels a little greedy and thinks that maybe they need to, to be buying something. So uh, there's, uh, I guess, a lot of theory. Now, I don't know where he got it from. Uh, if he developed it himself or if it was something he learned from somebody else. But it, it's something that just seems that you get three days, you go away on a little bit of vacation, and you come back and you see the market with new eyes, maybe. Maybe that's the way to say it. Um, but, the, you know, he would do those scenarios a week before all these big summer uh, weekends, and it just seemed to work very well. If you got a fairly clear signal, I think like we are today, where we're going to end up with about half the volume we've had at these previous lows around these levels. And I'm starting to see that in some stocks from my scans last night. And we'll talk about those uh, after I'm done with you. But there's, you know, there's just enough. Uh, I'm looking at Hymex right now, which is H-I-M-X, makes a lot of uh, electronic parts in Taiwan. And we're testing a previous low that had 9.5 million shares with 1.2 million, 1.3 million shares now. So it's telling me that there's, you know, even if you go to the uh, next low around this level, it was uh, 2.5 million shares. So, we're, you know, when you look for those, you can get them. Now, one of the other things that happened is the character that he taught was that the character of the markets change. And that is you get new leaders, or if you're going up, you go down. But what you should look at, if not the direction, the character will change. Uh, much like the rule of alternation in uh, Elliott Wave, where you know if one is kind of rough going down, the next one tends to be rather straight and linear. Uh, so choppy or kind of uh, in line and very proper and uh, orderly, as they like to say in, in the market, compared to chaotic. So as we've come down, uh, these big gaps and everything would suggest that whatever we do next week will be far more linear. If we go down, it will be, you know, uh, kind of a, a orderly move lower. And if we go up, it'll be an orderly move higher. But uh, certainly if you come in, you see all these gaps, you bounce up, you bounce down, the next time you, you come out of these three-day weekends, you're going to have a different kind of market. Uh, somebody in the den said that I was buying uh, options, and I am not uh, at the time. I'm buying individual stocks uh, that I think could do very well, uh, especially in the sector rotation. I think I have enough evidence to believe that as an ongoing thesis for summertime. But I think that's it. We've had a lot of these stocks really, like Microsoft, push to the highs. And I think it's a time for maybe those to rest for a while and look for stocks that don't have as much uh, uh, 
exposure uh, to trade issues going up and, and down. Does that answer? David, that was uh, very thorough. I, uh, I understand you. Uh, so thanks uh, on uh, both counts, and uh, enjoy your uh, your trip out west. You bet. And uh, I will pop into the den from time to time, so uh, I won't be a total stranger. And, uh, of course, all newsletters uh, will be coming just the same way they are um, since, uh, for the most part, I start about three hours later than everything else. So uh, I'll be able to get up and get everything done. Um, but, uh, yeah. Very good. Thanks again. Cards and letters coming. And, of course, you can email me at path at tfnn.com or uh, call at 877-927-6648. As I was saying, uh, we're looking at a couple of these stocks. I like this one right here, which is High Max, And that just a, is a good example of a long, uh, drawn-out back to the low. And go. Oh, yeah, I thought I thought he had already hung up. Sorry. Thanks, John, for the call. Um, anyway, we were looking at that. Um, you've got some other things out here that make me think that maybe the SMHs are due for a fairly strong bounce uh, in the uh, um, other uh, in other sectors like uh, miners. Um, I didn't like. Uh, FCX that much. It's had a couple of two big gap downs since it's high at 1468. What I do like though, it's about 16 cents away from this December 26 low that had 20 million shares. Uh, today you're into about 14 million shares. So you might get back in here and test these lows on lighter volume uh, today or tomorrow. Volume really dries up and you uh, go below 960 and pull back up. Uh, the, you probably have some fairly strong support in these. Any kind of trade deal uh, would just be gravy on uh, on what you're looking at. Uh, so what else do we have? Oh, we're going to break here. We'll look at some other stocks. Like I said, right now, what you want to be doing is looking at stocks that are fairly low priced, $5, $10, something like that for the most part. It can go higher. We'll be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. 
Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And I had a very good question uh, in the email uh, during the break, and uh, I want to. And someone asked why I wasn't buying calls. Um, one, um, I think that the, like I said, if it's the, if we're looking at the rule of alternation first, I'm not expecting a 50 point gap up on Tuesday. Uh, well, maybe that happens. Maybe we get a tweet, but. I'm not expecting it. I'm expecting a linear move, not a sinusoidal move with lots of gaps starting next week. The second part is that when I'm buying bottoms uh, or lows and the VIX is below like 16 or 15, then I consider buying calls. If it's you know 17 or 18, generally the, the calls and puts are way too expensive for you to ever make any money. We bought the uh, calls on UVXY, uh, what were they, like a buck 30 or something like that, or uh, that, and uh, sold them above, what was it, six bucks or something, seven? Uh, that's what I like. I want to buy the UVXY calls when the, uh, when the VIX is like, 12. Uh, that's the only time that you get the kind of bang for the buck that you really want. The risk reward is there. And again, you don't want to do it more than probably a few times a year. It's not something that you do every day. Uh, but even if I was thinking about buying calls on the equities that I'm buying now, I probably wouldn't with a VIX at 17, 17 and a half. Each time that uh, VIX goes up about uh, two points, uh, your your ability to actually make a profit on that option goes down dramatically, uh, almost an order of magnitude. So I'm not a big fan of it. Um, it you know, screaming high highs, I short the UVXY, which we did right at uh, Christmas. Uh, and when you're down and there's literally no volatility and everybody's uh, euphoric, I like uh, actually buying calls on the UVXY, but that you know you've got to look and find absolute extremes, and you've got to look at what you had in the last movement. If the last movement down was wild, then you can probably look at the next move as somewhat sedate or tepid or uh, slow, and generally you need very fast movement in options. So. I would rather do a few other things. I would rather buy stocks that are five bucks or two bucks or three bucks off of lows because you're probably going to make uh, percentage wise as much as you would on an option without the time risk. Uh, but when the, especially when those options are uh, always expensive after some huge move, um, you can't buy calls cheap because everybody thinks there's going to be a bounce. And you can't buy puts cheap because everybody believes that the end of the world's around the uh, corner. And that's why the VIX is that high. So uh, just a thought kind of uh, a continuation with game theory about the way that you should put your uh, trading system together. Uh, I always say that anybody that wants to get into trading should buy 
uh, Dave uh, Slasky's Slonsky Slosky's book uh, called "The Theory of Playing Poker," and it is maybe even if you don't want to play poker, it is maybe one of the best ideas to think about how to apply game theory to what you're doing in trading. And that's what I've kind of come down to. Uh, at highs uh, and euphoric highs uh, with a VIX at lows, I want to be, I don't mind buying puts then. Uh, as long as, you know, the VIX isn't sky high. Uh, but uh, the same thing, I don't want to be buying calls when the VIX is sky high. At the lows, I'd rather buy stocks uh, that are ch uh, inexpensive by price, maybe not, you know, by P.E., uh, but generally that's when you get the big rips off the bottom of, you know, a $3 stock that goes to $4 or $4.50, but it may take a month, and your options have already expired. And uh, for me, I would rather look at three uh, at very inexpensive stocks massively shorted. So if the market starts moving up, I'm going to have the opportunity to have the wind in my back too. So we were talking a little bit about that before. I'm pretty much uh, a uh, guy that the first thing he does when he looks at, at a stock is how short the market is. And that was it. Uh, I will post that in the den, but it's, in fact, we can look it up, I think, fairly quickly. Can I? Is that it? Yeah. David Slansky, Slansky, The Theory of Poker. And yeah, let's see, there's a, on Amazon. I will actually put that in the den here so you can see it. Uh, wow, it's 13 whole bucks. Uh, but uh, this guy is a uh, brilliant, uh, brilliant mathematician that learned to play poker. If you watch the poker channels, you'll see him on there a lot. Um, you know, I'm not somebody who can sit there any longer and play 13 hours straight. For poker, that's a young game, you know, a 20-year-old guy's game, and they're, you're burned out by the time you're 25. But the theory of how many times you should bluff in a game, uh, the value of, uh, you know, playing a free card, uh, being first uh, in the deal. I mean, he breaks this thing down. And when you think about the way you should trade, that's kind of what I always think about. I always think about, okay, how can I break this, ga uh, this game down? Uh, we call trading down into certain things, and I can start thinking about it. But anyway, uh, it's, uh, what, four and a half stars? I want to know the creep that gave this less than five stars, because this is an excellent book. Uh, a, po a professional poker player teaches you how to think like one, but more than that, he uh, teaches you how to think in game theory. And uh, like I said, excellent book. I'm not uh, trying to convince anybody into playing poker. Um, I played it for fun for a while. Actually, even won 12 grand in a uh, tournament once in Oklahoma. But again, it's just for me. Uh, I have uh, short attention spans, and this is the kind of stuff where you have to be able to sit down and play for 12 hours in a row, and that's not me. But uh, eh, you never know. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, somebody actually put it in there. Anyway, great book. Uh, glad to get derailed. Uh, but again, I will probably uh, uh, win the uh, uh, divergence and uh, award for TFNN or Christmas dinner once again uh, by uh, going off yet down another path. But excellent book, well worth reading. And uh, don't have to play poker to enjoy it. Really take a look at it. I think you'll enjoy it. Another thing you'll enjoy are uh, Tiger Dollars. We'll talk about that in the next segment. Where's my music? Got to have it. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best. 
at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And uh, since I won't be here for the next week, uh, your last chance to buy Tiger Dollars is running out. For this weekend, you will certainly want to check that out. You also want to uh, check out the art of timing the trade charts. Uh, I'd say 90% based on Tom O'Brien's book. Uh, if you sign up now, you'll get that book, and it's well worth uh, the price of admission since it has just about everything we talk about uh, at TFNN in there. So uh, a great book to go ahead and take a look at. A few things that I added uh, in this, which are, is the Power Law Vector uh, Indicator. Uh, there are tutorials on the website if you want to take a look, uh, but uh, good place. Anyway, I had a question about uh, whether or not there were any more double repo patterns, and they're not the kind that I really like, but there is kind of one. Um, generally, you want to have uh, these go up into a, a, a continuing uptrend uh, but uh, you've got a fairly decent candle down in MasterCard today, but you do not have the volume. Normally, what you want to see is exactly what we saw back up at 2940 or whatever it was, and that is when all these things cracked. They came down on enormous volume, uh, and uh, you know this one's probably not it, but it's kind of the pattern, uh, but you want to see the volume as it goes back. After it goes up for 15 10, 15, 20 days, goes underneath the 3x3 the three three displace for a handful of days, above the 3x3 three three for a handful of days. The next time it goes below is generally when you want to pull the ripcord on going short. 
unfortunately, you, your confirmation on that is not only does it break that, but volume comes in on it, and you're not getting that today. So kind of a putting a fine point on the pencil of double repo patterns from Joe DiNapoli, which ha helped us actually catch those highs. And maybe that's what I'll be working on next week. Just a little food for thought. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. I will see you back here again June 3rd.